Matthew Shavers. Matthew Shavers. Contestant number two, Arlet Washington. Arlet Washington. Contestant number three, John Labby. John Labby. Contestant number four, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox. Contestant number five, Sean McPartland. Sean McPartland. Contestant number six, Edie Reese. Edie Reese. Contestant number seven, Carl Seidman. Carl Seidman. Contestant number eight, Sergio Rigo. Sergio Rigo. And contestant number nine, Ava Tony Smith. Snyder. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ava Tony Snyder. <laughs> Miss Sergeant of Arms, will you please escort the, all the contestants out except for our first contestant, Matthew Shapers.
the character that that faith gives me allows me to overcome those innate desires to maybe not follow the right path. Say, for instance, there's a hundred dollar bill right here. Wow, I could easily keep this. Nobody would know. Nobody saw me pick it up. But we're in a room full of Toastmasters. And I'm guessing each of us with a hundred dollar bill might be missing that when you go to look for something to buy for the resource room later. <laughs> There's your butt. The right thing, my faith tells me, is to go find someone in our district leadership, give that to them and say, I found this. Announce that somebody lost that. I was divorced a little over a year ago. I had a little bit of anger, a little bit of bitterness. The human thing for most people, I think anyone that's gone through something like that, but experienced a little bit of anxiety, frustration. But my faith told me not to hold that grudge. One of my favorite quotes, which I'm guessing Colonel Joel will read later, is acknowledge and move on. I acknowledge my anger. I asked God why, and accepted that the plan was, it's going to be better on the other side. I made that move, I forgave, and didn't hold those feelings. The power, the courage to move on, to do the right thing, when you know that in your heart you don't want to. For me, it's all about my faith. And I hope for you, you have your own guiding principle that leads you to do the right thing. Madam Contest of We will have a minute of silence while the judges mark the ballots. If you will give me the green light. Do any judges need any more time? All right, second contestant, Harlan Washington. How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? Harlan Washington. and smell, fire, to smell the fire if there is one that is burning, to look over and see the bee that is fluttering about. Now, who is this Gertrude that gives me strength? I know you're asking that question. And this is Gertrude. <laughs> she is my third leg, and she makes it possible that all things can occur. So my friends, I have all the strength that I need. I have all the additional character that I need. And all I do is ask you, come along with me and enjoy the journey. 
because inside each of you is the strength that is needed. You don't really need a Gertrude. And one day, I'm going to put Gertrude down also as I continue to strengthen my knees. But along the way, let's have some fun. Let's talk about the exercising that strengthens my muscle. Let's talk about my meditation life that strengthens my spirit. And let's talk about the family who encircles me and my club that gives me that extra measure. So you, my friends, just might be the extra measure needed to give me all the strength that I need or ever desire. Gertrude might be standing right next to me, and in my closet, I have Shaniqua. <laughs> so come along, my friends, and enjoy the ride as we build ourselves together. Thank you. Minute of silence for the judges to mark their ballots. Thank you, Bert. Contestant number three, John Labby. How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? How do you find the strength to do what you know is right? In How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? John Labby.
was say, I'm sorry. And again, and again, and again, until it became almost easy to admit that I had screwed up. I think that we learn to do the right thing possibly every day. From our own experience, we learn what works, what causes pain, and what doesn't. That's what worked for me. Madam Postmaster. We will have a minute of silence for the judges to mark their ballots. Contestant number four, Matthew Fox. How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? Matthew Fox. Ten years in Toastmasters, how do you know what to do when it's right in your heart? It's a tough question. It goes into that place that I worked really hard to find, where let's say you're being asked to be a contest judge, and you're coaching a contestant. That's a tough call. What do you do? I turned it down. In my heart, it wasn't right. It's when I go to pause. And I volunteer, and I can see the connection happening between a potential adopter and a dog. Have you ever felt a connection like that? It's beautiful. The dog thinks it's won the lottery. It runs up. <laughs> it's such a warm feeling. I know in my heart at that moment, that connection is real. That is something I know is right. And ladies and gentlemen, there's one special lady who is here tonight, and hopefully she doesn't get too embarrassed. But I know, when I look into her eyes, it feels right. It's that amazing feeling. You can't put a title on it. You can't put a word on it. I, what, what, what word would you choose? I'm at a loss. But it feels right. There's so many amazing things we have in this world, so many tough choices of what to do and what road to go down. And it's been everything from Toastmasters and those tough ethical decisions that I've had to face when I've been an area director, an officer, or any other level. It's that pause when I know an animal and their new parents meet for the first time and they go to their forever home. And ladies and gentlemen, when I look in cats' eyes, everything falls away. It just feels right. Contest master. We will have a minute of silence for the judges.
Contestant number five, Sean McPartland. How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? How do you find the strength to do what you know in your heart is right? Sean McPartland. Masters and distinguished guests. When I was growing up, uh, I, I realized I was given a great gift by my mother. And it wasn't a gift on a Christmas morning where I'm ripping open the package. It was not a gift that on my 10th birthday I ripped open. It was a gift that took 50 years to give me. And that gift was to see people simply as people. My mother is very consistent with that her whole life. And as I got older, I'm 50 years old now, I learned what a great, what an absolutely great gift that is. You think about all the opportunities we miss of, of making a new friend or, or a mentor or anything when we label people and we put them in different boxes. And my mother has always been consistent with that. And I think that is the right thing to do. And I look at what an advantage in a way that's given me life, uh, given my life. And there's a little saying that says, think globally and act locally. And we all want to change some problems in the world, ignorance and different things. Well, my mother acted locally. And she made a big difference for me. And I have two girls in college right now. My son's about to go to college. And I know I gave them that gift. And I know they have a great advantage in life simply because they see people simply as people. And I think that is the right thing to do, and that's how I do it. Thank you, Madam. We will have a minute of silence for the ballot count. For the budgets. <laughs>
go together. And some of you who probably have heard me speak previously, I took a trip to Vietnam uh, about three years ago. And in Hanoi, which is in the northern part of Vietnam, they have the most unbelievable street food you've ever seen in your life. You could just go up to a stall, they make something, you say, I'll have that, and it's delicious. So pho is terrific, it's Vietnamese soup. Uh, and I've also tried some really crazy things, like uh, balut, if you know what that is, I'm not going to say. Uh, and all sorts of other things, but just the adventure of eating is fantastic. Thank you very much. Contestant number eight, Sergio Rego. The club and how long? Loop Trust Masters, yeah. Chicago Loop, and for three years. You like music? That's one of your hobbies. Tell us, how is that your hobby? What do you do? What do you play? Uh, Music is something that never came naturally to me, but I've always really enjoyed it. And so nowadays I play several instruments, and I love to listen to the Beatles, greatest band ever. And I can never, I listen to Rubber Soul nonstop. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Tony Snyder. Well, my club is Speakers of the House Toastmasters Club, number 273065, and I've been a Toastmaster for seven years. What inspires you most is positive growth. So share with us some of your positive growth. Well, I remember when I became a Toastmaster, speaking in front of an audience was not an issue for me, but competing was. And I had one of Toastmasters champions come and speak to me about competing. They said to me, it's time for you to get out there. Your voice and your story needs to be heard. And I was still very fearful, but from having that conversation, they informed me, don't worry about whether you win, or whether you place or whether you lose, get out there and have the experience. And I have to say, whether I win or lose, it has proven to be a very positive growth for me. So I'm hoping to pass that on to members of my club as well. everyone to get out and compete. It will push you so much further. And as you heard, this is now my career. And I got started back in 1991. And I started competing. And the first time, the humorous, I didn't even place three years later to district and never give up, never surrender. So, how? <laughs> Quoting from Galaxy Quest. <laughs> Would our district uh, leader like to share anything with us with what's happening or as we're, you know, tap dancing while we're waiting for the winner? <laughs> this is known as impromptu tabletop. Everyone says. 
says, including me, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. But people have put that aside and they stepped up. They stepped up. They stepped out. And I really want to thank you. This is the first time I've actually been able to sit down and enjoy the contest. But if I'm needed, I'm there. The second thing I want to say, I want to repeat something. Competing is awesome. I was in a humorous speech contest in 2010. You don't know anything about that. But it was great. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. <laughs> Someone had said, if you yell loud or scream, it'll get the audience's attention. <laughs> I jumped off the stage and went, ah! <laughs> and this young lady that was sitting there, I thought, oh, goodness. What did I just do to her? <laughs> she couldn't look at me. <laughs> so these contestants, I think, are awesome. Tomorrow's international speech. And the far as not giving up, you don't need a Gertrude. <laughs> but don't give up. Stay in. Stay in. That's all I have to say. This is my table topics. Thank yeah. you so much. We have the winners. Isn't this nice? We do it immediately and not like tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So let's bring up here our dignitaries to announce our winners and to hand out our prizes. So District Director Ethel Gautier, please come up. Congratulate everyone.